they had the outline of it. And when they all, when they, when the other fellows in the company that the old man had made up, they got cold feet. They didn't know how to go about it. Six months, that's how I got into it over that day. Some of the old timers have criticized the mills here for what the wells, one of them said that they, they raped the land. They well, they, to a certain extent, that's true. That's true. They, they, uh, they were so much of the stuff that, that now is high price. Stuff that they burned. Now they had a, in that mill picture, of mine. You know, you seen that big burner? It's 125 feet high and it's 20 feet in diameter. And uh, there was an endless chain, and all the all the cold stuff went from the mill up in there and dropped in and burned. Now, they, the company gave the, all the farmers all over this country here, give them permission. Now, there was a walkway went up between these, uh, this cable. It one went up, carried it up, and then the other returned, you know, empty. Said, just bring your teams. Go up on that that short lumber. Some of it, you know, that maybe it'd be six, seven feet long, but it has some bark on it. And they couldn't get a board out of it. They give it to them. I don't, that was another thing was the, was the waste there. While now then they make hard board and they make this and they make that out of the sawdust and well. What, what about the way they clear cut the land? Well, they, uh, they, the tops, the pine tops, now the, after they went to cutting oak, why they, uh, then they used up the, all the tree because, uh, the, the, Medco then had their, the government had that big, uh, uh, uh retort outfit yeah. down near Medco, you know. The government did, all through World War One. And they kept their tops cleaned up that way. That is the hardwood. Do you think but, it hurt the land the way they cut it? No, I don't think so because pine land's not worth a dime anyway. You couldn't raise you couldn't hardly raise peas on pine land. You see this this country where they were cutting, they'd a lot certain strips. They kept us uh, severe all the time, didn't do anything else. Like this bottom here now, the pines would be just so thick that you couldn't drive wagon or anything through them. Well, they did a lot to a certain amount this way, you know, a strip so long. That is for the log cutter. They cut, they, they worked with a thousand. That is, they cut the logs by the thousand, and uh, and they that's where they that's where the waste was at when they that timber was so thick that uh, when they start a new uh, when they start a new uh, strip, sometimes they'd cut down twelve, fifteen trees before they'd ever get one to ground. They just keep falling against each other and falling against each other until the weight would would fall on the ground. And then they cut the logs. Well, they left the tops. But they, at that time, before that, before they commenced using coal for the locomotive, so they they used those pine knots. See, they, at that time, they. They burned the woods off every spring. That was all over this whole country. It was free range, and they burned the woods off in order to get the grass. You could burn off two or three hundred acres, and it wouldn't be over a couple of three weeks in the spring till the grass would be way up, just as pretty as you've ever seen. Well. The fire running over those, uh, over the, uh, those tops, they'd burn the, 
they small limbs and things of that kind, but wherever there was a knot, like the limb had put out, you know, there's always a big knot right next to it. Well, they, they just, lots of times, they, well, we just go out there and when I help get a many a load of them, you just take the axe and knock them off those skeletons. Well, that's the way they, they used the pine, and that's all they did use, is the pine knots. Sometimes you'd find a, a log that would be eight or ten feet, it'd be just as rich, it burned burn just like celluloid. You just touch a match to it and it's just gone, that's quick. And well, those pine knots the same way, well, that's the way they, that's the way they loaded the, or fired their locomotives. They had stations all along the, the railroad, like they stopped to get water or something of the kind, while they'd load up on, on pine knot. Well, that's what one of the pine knots, but the top, those skeletons sometimes, they didn't all burn up. Oh, they would in time burn up, and, and they brought it pretty quick, too. I heard, uh, what are you doing? I'm just going to sling it one more. One oh two tails, one oh two. When they cut the timber, did they have any conservation methods they used at all? No, that is like your license to fish and license to hunt. And you used to know if you wanted to go turkey hunting, they did not make any difference what day it was or what time of the year it was, you just picked up your gun and <laughs> went. What about what about cutting the trees? Were there any conservation? Well, it, that, you take back now. I'm going to have to go back to to my younger days, back uh, when I was around. Uh, well, just in the latter part of the 80s and uh, early 90s, there was lots of, of homesteading land yet. There's lots of lots of uh, government owned a lot of homestead land, and. Uh, they, uh, sometimes they poachers would get in, you know, there's lots of it that would find white oak and post oak timber. And the poachers would slip in, hack them a few ties, or maybe get them some fence poles, you and get by me, with it. You told me an interesting story uh, in one of the interviews last year, and that was about your first pair of shoes, and you bought it with money you... I made guys for it. Yeah, tell us that story, would you? <laughs> well, we... Father had a lot of, of fine post oak and white oak on our farm, and, and there's an old tie actor there in the country, and... What was that? What'd you say? When was that? That was four miles north of Willow Spring. When? Oh, that was, uh, let's see, that is about it. Well, I was looking at the picture the other day that uh, another fellow took of our old farm home. It's a two-story. I don't know. I just like the devil and everything. And I tried my best to do it better than anybody else. Like I was just going to tell you. And that I made boats like that for two or three years in the summertime. Well, it wasn't anything taking my boys any better. And when I got them done, I built them right here on the, on the, almost on the bank of the creek. They'd climb in. Well, now I suppose that run them down to Eminence, to Riverside Park. Well, that was just a fine trip for them. They'd take the boat around down there. That's where I delivered it. Was there a lot of floating on the river? Oh, the yeah, lots of it. Lots of it. I built them. I built boats anywhere from 12 to 30 feet long. Now, the, what they called a gigging boat, they were 30 feet long and they was only about this wide. Now they could, they give you then, you see, a boat of that length, a boat of that length, why, 
they could put their foot up, one foot up on the side of the boat like that, you know, and pitch game. It never would scoot from under them or turn over or anything. I made the, the I made the, uh, when I'd start with my camera on Sunday morning, and I made more in, on Sunday than I made all week if I worked for the company. What were they pictures of? Everything. They'd gather up, you know, they, they'd gather up and, and uh, be in gangs, young folk. And the depot, the depot was, a, oh boy, that was a real place to gather when the train come in. They just about like you go in their church house with a big bunch of people. Well, that's where I that's where I made a dive for was that depot platform. <laughs> I'd get a whole bunch of postcards. 